Colossians chapter 2 this evening. We looked mainly last, last week at uh, verses 6 and 7 on the fact that when we get saved, the Lord establishes us. We're established in Christ. Uh, we received him by faith, and he says we're to, we're to uh, walk the same way. As you have received, therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him rooted and built up in him and established in the faith as you've been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. And uh, yeah, it's a blessing to, to think about the fact that the, it's the Lord that saves us, the Lord that keeps us. Uh, we, we're not trusting ourselves. We're not trusting our good works. Uh, I'm, I'm reading a book right now called The Reformers and Their Stepchildren. Uh, it's about people like us when the Reformation happened. And, uh, it, you know, all... Since not long after Christ, it's mainly been churches who believed in salvation by works and those who believed in salvation by grace. And eventually it became the ones who believed in works became the state religion. And it became like you're a traitor if you weren't part of their, their church. So uh, there's been a lot, a lot of things going on. And it's, it's so important that we understand what the word of God says. Uh, culture, uh, things will change all around us, but God's word stays the same. And uh, we're, we're saved by faith, we live by faith. And this week I want, I want you to see the fight that trusting Christ causes. <laughs> now we're going to look at it this week and probably next week as well. There is a battle. Now one of the things Satan is called is our adversary. And uh, the reason you have a, a, an adversary is because there's, there's a conflict. Uh, I want to read... Um, most of chapter 2 tonight. Let's start in verse 1, uh, Colossians chapter 2, and I'm going to read about half of the chapter. For I would that ye knew what great conflict I have for you, and for them at Laodicea, and for as many as have not seen my face in the flesh, that their hearts might be comforted, being knit together in love, and unto all riches of the full assurance of understanding, to the acknowledgement of the mystery of God, and of the Father, and of Christ, in whom are hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. And this I say, lest any man should beguile you with enticing words. For though I be absent in the flesh, yet am I with you in the spirit, joying and beholding your order and the steadfastness of your faith in Christ. As ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith as you've been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. Beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit, after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, and ye are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power, in whom also ye are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands in putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ, buried with him in baptism, wherein also ye are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God who hath raised him from the dead. And you, being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh, hath he quickened together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. And having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. We're just going to stop reading there. Uh, there's some exciting verses there. Uh, but he, he's talking, at least partly here, about the battle. Well, once you trust Christ, there's those, he, he uses the word there in verse 8, beware. You know, watch out. There's, there's people who want to spoil you. And uh, we need to understand our faith is in, in Christ. We believe that Christ is sufficient. You know, God is enough. If all we have is God, that's enough. <laughs> all right? Uh, Colossians 1, verse 27. To whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Now, when we have Christ, our, our, when our faith is in Christ, uh, we have enough. Uh, in Ephesians, he puts it this way. Uh, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. It's Ephesians 1.3. Uh, now, if this is a fight, we shouldn't be surprised 
when fighting goes on in our life. <laughs> that, that's really where I started last week, and I, I, I thought, well, we need to really start back a step. Um, even as Christians, we're going to have times when things are upsetting. We're going to have times when things are in conflict in our lives. And we need to understand, uh, you know, God has said, for instance, in Jude and verse 3, we need to be willing to contend for the faith. Uh, he uses that, that expression in, you can't say Jude 1, but verse 3, uh, he says, It was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that ye should earnestly contend for the faith, which was once delivered unto the saints. We're not getting new loads of faith. <laughs> All right, he's not continually changing it. Uh, God has given it to us. It's been delivered. And uh, part of our life as Christians is contending for the faith. Uh, you need to ask yourself, are you willing to contend for the faith? Uh, when you got saved, uh, I don't know, I never had this happen when I was a kid, but you know, I used to hear about people say, you step across that line and boy, we're going to have a fight, you know. Uh, you put your toe across that line. Well, we've stepped across the line when we got saved. Uh, we said, okay, I'm on the Lord's side. What are you going to do about it? Well, the devil, the world, the flesh, and the devil, they do things about it, but they can't take it away. And Christ has already, already won the victory. Now, it's a very... Uh, well, look at Colossians 1, verse 13, for instance. Now, he shows us this difference. Who hath delivered us from the power of darkness... And hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. You see, there's the two sides. Uh, the darkness and the light. Uh, what we were before, what we are now in Christ. In uh, 2 Corinthians 11.3, he says that it's a very simple pro proposition. He says, I fear lest by any means as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that's in Christ. Our relationship to God through Christ, it, it, God said, is very simple. When I was younger, they used to pass out multitudes of tracts, God's simple plan of salvation. They're still around. It's still the same plan. Uh, it, it's a very simple proposition. We're either on the Lord's side or we're not. And if we're on the Lord's side, there's things he says that are true. He says he'll never leave us, and, and so on. Uh, many, many promises. And, and the question that we need to ask ourselves is, will I trust Christ, or will I trust something else? So when we talk about living by faith, we're talking about trusting Christ. The, the contention is to keep trusting Christ. You, you know, that, that's the battle. Now, I'm not, uh, I need to be careful how I phrase this. I'm not saying you can, you can quit trusting Christ if, if you're saved. Uh, but as Christians, we need to be careful that we're living, um, that we hold to God's word. And that we're not letting ourselves be deceived by other things that would say, oh, trust me. Trust me. The fight is, is very real. Look at verse 8. And this shows us, I, I believe, our enemy's goal. Beware lest any man spoil you. That word spoil means to take captive. You probably heard in battle, you know, they take spoil. When they, when they come in, it can be people, it can be things. That's the spoil. They take it away. Well, the devil wants to do that to us. He wants to take us away. He wants to take us captive. Um, and he, he talks here about some of his methods. We'll just look at them uh, a, a few tonight here. In verse 8, he says, Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy. That word just means love of wisdom. And it's referring to human wisdom. If you love the Lord's wisdom, that's, that's not a problem. The thing about philosophy, if you were ever to take a philosophy class, it doesn't have any answers, it just has questions. They're ever searching. It's like the Bible says, and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Uh, you know, stop and think about the three main questions of life. Where did I come from? Why am I here? Where am I going? Philosophy has no answers to the main questions of life. <laughs> Where did we come from? Ooh. Not sure, but we can talk about it a lot. Uh, why am I here? Well, I'm not sure, but you know, what, what do you think? How do you feel about that? Uh, and where am I going? You know, those are three main questions, aren't they? Well, God answers those questions. Philosophy doesn't. And the thing about philosophy, it, it can sound so knowledgeable. And there's plenty of smart people who don't believe the Bible and are into philosophy. But, but let me say this as well. There's plenty of smart people who believe the Bible. Some of the smartest people in the world have, have believed the Bible. 
And I, I think what he's talking about here includes, philosophy includes vain deceit. Uh, vain deceit, the words just mean empty trickery, you know, full of words and, and so on. They give you false impressions. Uh, you would see this in psychology. You, you would see this in, the, the Bible refers to science falsely so-called. You know, the world's magic word now is, oh, that's, that's the science. We've got to believe the science. I was really disappointed to hear that a, a major preacher of, of a big, big church said, well, if science and the Bible disagree, we have to go with science. Oh, man, that's, he's missed the boat. Uh, that's exactly what God is talking about here. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. Uh, he uses then the word after the traditions of men. Uh, the word traditions literally means to give up. <laughs> uh, traditions are like when you say, okay, I guess I'll just do it like everybody else. <laughs> you know, in, instead of being uh, what God wants you to be, you just say, well, everybody else is doing it. I'll just do it that way. And the, the world, the flesh, and the devil know that if, if, you, if you go that way, you won't be living by faith. If all you're doing is, you know, we can, we can live by, um, would it be democracy? You know, when you vote on things, you know, 51% say this is okay. Oh, I guess it's okay. God says that's not the way you decide. God has revealed uh, what's right and what's wrong. Uh, he also talks about the rudiments, the rudiments of the world and not after Christ. The word rudiments means the elements or the building blocks. It's like letters are the rudiments of words and paragraphs. Uh, the elements are the rudiments of material things. Um, and it, it's like people get so down to the details they miss the message. It'd be like being so concerned about the letters that you didn't worry what the words said. <laughs> Have you ever heard the expression, they couldn't see the forest for the trees? Uh, it, it's that kind of, of a thing. You're so concerned about the little things that you don't see the big picture. And uh, you can get so involved with the rudiments of the world, things that quite often are true, little, little things that are true, and, and then they make presumptions from them. L let me show you a real negative one in Colossians 3, um, really the whole chapter, but verse 5. Mortify there your members, I'm sorry, mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth. He talks about various sins. Uh, verse 7, in the, which also ye, uh, in the which ye also walked sometime when ye lived in them. Part of the rudiments of the world are what the world would call things that come naturally. Now, especially now that many people believe in evolution. Uh, anything you do, they can say, well, that's just, that's just the way we are. You know, if you're immoral, if you steal, if you lie, oh, well, that's, that's just the way we are. That's the rudiments of the world in a, in a sinful, negative way. Um, the natural things. Well, God says the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God. Neither can he know them because they're, they're spiritually discerned. Uh, philosophy opposes Christ and the cross. And uh, that's, that's one of the enemies uh, of faith. In uh, 1 Corinthians 1, verses 18 and 19, he says, the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Yeah, there's people who think we are fools to believe the Bible. They think they are so smart. They, you know, they know this and they know that. Uh, they don't stop to think that they don't use a five-year-old science book. They don't use a 10-year-old science book. We use a book that's thousands of years old, and the truth hasn't changed. Uh, their, their ideas keep changing. It's philosophy. And if you want to go by philosophy, that's an enemy uh, of faith. The, the second one that he, he points out here in Colossians 2, I haven't read the verses yet, verses 16 and 17, I, I would label this as legalism. Let no man, uh, verse 16, let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink or in respect of an holy day or of the new moon or of the Sabbath days, which are a shadow of things to come, but the body is of Christ. See, those, those were pictures, and, uh, but the reality is, is Christ. A lot of religion is ritual. It's external. It's ceremonies that, that people do. Uh, the Bible says Christ fulfilled the law for us. We're, we're not under the law. Uh, verse 14, we'd read, 
blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us. Um, and, and he starts uh, verse 16 there, let no man therefore judge you. Uh, legalism uh, is an enemy of faith. And you know, a lot of people like that. Sometimes that's a person's personality. Sometimes people are kind of legalistic in their personality. They want everything cut and dried in, in a certain way. Uh, listen, if that's your personality, be careful. You want to live by grace. Uh, you know, God made you the way you are for a purpose, and, and he'll use it for good. But uh, if we only go by the law, we're, we're not going to live by faith. And the law is not there to commend us. Uh, it, it was there to show us our need of, of Christ. Legalism is uh, one of the methods that the enemy uses to uh, spoil us. Thirdly, verses 18 and 19, you might call this mysticism. Let no man beguile you of your reward in a voluntary humility and worshiping of angels, intruding into those things which he hath not seen, vainly puffed up by his fleshly mind, and not holding the head, from which all the body by joints and bands having nourishment ministered and knit together increaseth with the increase of God. Can you see some of the things he's talking about there? Uh, very current, isn't it? You know, people worshiping angels, people talking about, uh, you know, it's different spiritual experiences that they've had. And you may have experienced this. Uh, people like this try and intimidate you with their spirituality. Oh, well, listen, God told me this. Uh, I was walking along and, and this happened. Or I saw this. I heard one lady said that you know, their plane was bouncing and she looked out and there was an angel holding up the wing of their, of their, of their airplane. Well, you know, what do you say to that? <laughs> uh, we need to be careful that we're not living by mysticism, that we're not worshiping the experience. He, he uses the expression there, the words, let no man beguile you. Uh, that word beguile means defraud. Uh, that's a kind of a legal term uh, to... Uh, uh, trick you and take away something that, that you, uh, that's yours. They're trying to steal away your, your faith. Uh, visions and, and all kinds of things people talk about, very mystical things. Uh, th there's a good illustration of this, and we won't go into it. You can look at it later in 1 Kings 13. You probably know the story where a uh, young prophet, God sends him to talk to, I think it was Jeroboam, and he tells him, you give him that message and you get straight home. Well, after he gives the message, an older prophet says, God's told me that you're supposed to come visit with me. Well, God hadn't told him. And God punishes the young prophet for his, his disobedience. Uh, that happens a lot where people say, oh, I, I know more. I'm more spiritual. Uh, watch out. We need to live by faith. And then the, the fourth one that uh, you see here, let, let me read in verses 20 and following. The, the word that I'd use here is not a common word, asceticism. Uh, let's just read first, verse 20. Wherefore, if you be dead with Christ from the rudiments of the world, why as though living in the world are you subject to ordinances, touch not, taste not, handle not, which all are to perish with the using after the commandments and doctrines of men, which things have indeed a show of wisdom in will worship and humility and neglecting of the body, not in any, any honor to the satisfying of the flesh. Um, uh, there's people who, instead of faith, they live lives that, of self-denial. There used to be people who would never bathe. And it was like a mark of honor that bugs would fall off of them. Oh, how spiritual that guy is. He's got, he's got bugs falling off of him. Listen, that, that is not scriptural. That is not godly. Uh, doing without things can be a, something that the Lord wants us to do or, or cannot be. Uh, but uh, we need to be careful because generally, like he says there, the, the reason behind this is, is pride, will worship. Uh, it's a show of wisdom, a show of humility. Uh, I know I've shared this with you before, but I was talking to a lady one time who was telling me how humble she was. And I jokingly said, you know, you should write a book, Humility and How I Attained It. <laughs> I, I really should, she said. Uh, you know, people who are into this kind of thing, asceticism, where they're denying themselves, it's not because of humility, although they'll say that, and they'll make sure you know it. Uh, it's because of, of pride. Now, these are just some things that he's mentioned here. Uh, but the point is, there's a battle. And uh, 
we, the battle we face is to hold to doctrinal purity and to live by faith. God's, God has called us by faith. He saved us by faith. He says we're to walk by faith. Uh, we read there in Jude how we are to contend for the faith in uh, Jude verse 3. The, the next verse says, There are certain men crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation, ungodly men, turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. You know, people can take a, a good and godly thing like grace and turn it into a, a permission to sin. Yeah, how wicked is that? Uh, we want to live by faith. We want to live by, by God's word. Uh, the, the point I'm trying to make here is, are, are we going to trust Christ? A am I going to trust Christ in my situation? Not, not just in, in, in general. Don't be discouraged just because there's a battle. We stepped across the line when we decided to trust Christ. There's going to be battles. You know, probably I know more than, than most in our church the battles that different ones are, are going through. It, it, we all face battles. Me too. <laughs> and, uh, you know, there's, there's things you, you know about people. There's things you don't know. And I'm sure it's the same about you. There's things you don't share with anybody except the Lord. But don't be surprised that there's a battle. But do trust the Lord. We're saved by faith. Let's, let's live by faith. Let's walk by faith. And uh, really what the, what the Bible is saying here in Colossians is, uh, we have everything we need in Jesus Christ. If uh, the world takes this away and that away, uh, we can live without this and that. But they can't take Jesus away. And in Colossians uh, 2, there in verse 8, he warns us, Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit, after the tradition of man, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. And here's the, the blessing. For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, and ye are complete in him, She is the head of all principality and power. Uh, we have what we need. Uh, God is enough. Uh, as we go through this, and as you're going through your, your studies in, in the scripture, learn what it means to live by faith. Don't be discouraged when a, a difficulty comes. Here's a chance to live by faith. <laughs> you know? uh, maybe you won't have that, quite that feeling, but you can know that uh, no matter how difficult it is, uh, God will, will see you through. There's no temptation taking you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful. He will not suffer you to be tempted above that you're able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape, that you may be able to bear it. God's promise is, I'll see you through. I'll hold your hand. I'll be with you. All right, so some, some good things. Uh, life can be quite difficult. Uh, I, I'm constantly amazed at what people go through and but you know, you just keep trusting in the Lord day by day, and he, he brings you out on the other side. Uh, we'll, we'll get there. Any comments or, or questions before we take prayer requests?